All right, what's going on, guys? Hope you all are having a good day. So I'm sure by now a lot of you guys have heard the news of what happened to Activision and Call of Duty and stuff like this, but I'm not going to cover so much the news. Well, I mean, we'll briefly recap it, but today I actually want to talk about what this means practically for zombies. And now since this is happening, we can sort of speak on the matter very clearly as to why zombie projects recently have been lackluster or otherwise completely failed and why, like, you know, the saying, like, it's always darkest before the dawn or something like that why that is literally about to be true for zombies and i do think to some extent there is a new golden era for zombies coming we'll have to wait and see but that's what we're going to be talking about today so as always if you guys end up enjoying the video be sure to drop it a thumbs up and if you are brand new to the channel and this is your first time being here first of all i want to welcome you and remember to go ahead and subscribe and stick around for more content i would very much appreciate it one last thing before it all kicks off i do want to think a moment to thank today's sponsor of the video real quick lads i want to thank techland for sponsoring this video if you didn't know dying light 2 recently released the final episode of their show, Dying to Know, which discussed the game, behind-the-scenes creation of the game, and fan contests that you can participate in and getting to understand the lore much better. Dying Light 2 features a dynamic city environment that has a multitude of secrets, levels, and locations to discover and explore. The combat is amazingly creative and brutal. Let your imagination run wild with how you'll traverse through enemies. There's a day and night cycle that prevents monsters from coming out during the daytime, but at night, you can infiltrate and invade the hideouts. Every single one of your choices have consequences and an impact on the environment in positive or negative ways. You can also play two to four player co-op and see how your choices differ from others and vice versa. Dying Light 2 is now available for pre-order using the link in the description, so please make sure to go and check it out if any of this interests you, and thank you very much once again to Techland for sponsoring this video. So anyways, getting back to the main topic here, the news broke a few days ago, which again, I'm sure most of you have heard by now, but for those of you who just like maybe don't get on Twitter and stuff, or just maybe don't use Reddit a ton or whatever, uh, Microsoft ended up purchasing Activision and Activision Blizzard for about $69 billion, and this means they're absorbing the entire company, all of the IT IPs and games that come alongside those. So these are now going to be completely under Microsoft. And what does this exactly mean for games in general? Well, obviously, now they all report to Microsoft and they're under one bigger conglomerate. But I want to talk about specifically what this means for Call of Duty as a franchise, but also very importantly, zombies. Now, technically, this transaction isn't actually finalized yet. It's still got to be reviewed by the SEC to make sure it's not, you know, violation of any laws or breaking anything. And but uh, aside from that, it's it's pretty much going through with 100% certainty. Because of this merger, I'm just going to talk openly and honestly about a lot of the things that went wrong with zombie projects in the past. Now, I think a lot of you guys are going to find this stuff interesting because it's stuff that not a lot of people know about. It's pretty obvious that one of the biggest things that zombies has to overcome is the fact that it's always treated as like a side mode, you know, since it's been developed in World at War and it technically was a side mode during then. Even in more recent years, it always felt like zombies was getting the short end of the stick in terms of resources, dev time, and even just attention in general. But I would say some games did it better than others. And in the past, the games that have had the most equalized time and resources managed to each of the pillars in Call of Duty, this means campaign multiplayer, and zombies almost equally, seemed to perform the best. And it's so interesting because most zombie titles have never really had, let's say, a normal dev cycle. There's been very few, actually. You may be surprised that Black Ops 3 was actually cobbled together for the most part in about a span of eight months, which is pretty impressive considering how well Black Ops 3 uh, not only ran, but how it's built and everything and how long it stood the test of time. And it had a fairly large dev team at the time, nothing too crazy or anything, but certainly bigger than what I personally expected during World War II 2017. I was very surprised to find out when I visited the studio that basically World War II Zombies of 2017 was run and developed by essentially like four or five people it was a ridiculously small team and very little resources and that explains a lot of what had to do with like you know maybe world war ii zombies being of lower quality and stuff like that black ops 4 which arguably had the biggest possibilities and potential of a zombies game ever unfortunately never fully like materialized or became all it could be because most of the dev team was completely pulled off the project black ops 4 zombies was actually supposed to have the most amount of resources ever and the largest dev team of all time but as the year went on i think it slowly dwindled to a team of less than 10 people i'm pretty sure cold war zombies had a relatively normal dev sized team but they basically picked up the 
project that Sledgehammer was working on and essentially Treyarchified it and made it into what we now know today as Cold War Zombies. But originally, it wasn't actually Treyarch's project that they were working on. So all of these, like, and, and, and let me not even get to Vanguard Zombies. That team probably has three people on it, maybe. I don't know. But I think the three ingredients you need to make a good Zombies game is good creative direction, time, and resources. And if they can manage all those things, they should be relatively in good shape. And it seems, hopefully, that's what this Microsoft merging is going to do. But we don't know exactly, like, when the effects of this are going to take place. Because we've also been hearing from higher-ups that either work at Activision or are just working on Call of Duty, that they've actually been trying to get off the yearly COD schedule release for a while. This was an idea we've been toying with for the past few years, and I think more and more people are starting to catch on to it. The idea that, hey, we actually don't need a new Call of Duty game every single year. This was more or less a choice from Activision, less than, you know, developers working on the games themselves. So it would appear possible that under this Microsoft merger, we might stop seeing Call of Duty get annual releases, and maybe we get a big game that's supported for two to three years that's of, uh, you know, higher quality than what we've been getting, and I think that's probably the solution that Call of Duty, not even Zombies, but just in general needs going forward. I was talking about in my last video how some dramatic change needed to take place for Call of Duty Zombies, and just before I, like, just after I posted that video was when the entire news about this Microsoft situation happened, so it's, it's almost like it was fate, I don't know, it's like, again, Cold War and Cold War Zombies in general were pretty popular because not only of the relative quality of the game, but it was also during the worldwide pandemic when the most amount of people were locked into their houses and had nothing else to do but play video games. That, I would say, was a net positive for the COD brand, but Vanguard, unfortunately, basically tarnished all of the goodwill that Cold War had established, so it's like we're just sort of resetting back to square one, and I genuinely think at this point, Vanguard may go down in history as possibly the worst Call of Duty ever. But in some weird, twisted, and backward sense, it's almost like we needed to hit a series low before they could actually turn this around and potentially even hitting brand new heights in the future. I really do think that the next couple of years are going to be very exciting for Call of Duty and for Zombies, and for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. But for those of you who saw my last video, we were talking about how Treyarch right now is working on a Black Ops 2 style of game, whether that's the form of like a remaster or just in general the same like time period and mechanics and whatnot that BO2 seems to emulate. You guys can go watch that video for more details, but the point is, I think that Treyarch is either going to see this project in and of itself be completely reworked or better implemented under Microsoft's new standards and how they're going to be handling Call of Duty going forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up just downloading a game called Call of Duty in like two years and it just continually updates with like the newer build of the game or extra DLC of the game. It just basically gets supported fairly frequently after we have a baseline game established for the most part. Again, it's sort of up in the air right now, but we do know that the entire the entirety of the studios and I would say even some people at Activision are probably pushing for Call of Duty to get off the yearly release schedule, which in my opinion will be such a good thing. And hopefully by either this or next year, we start to see that in action. But there's a few other really exciting things in, in terms of zombies that we could see. In my last video as well, I was kind of sad about the fact that Black Ops 3 was likely the only zombies game or the final one that we would ever see that would feature customs or the ability to get like mod tools and stuff. But because under this Microsoft merger uh, and Call of Duty will likely start to be on Steam again at some point, we could probably see another zombies game with mod tools released. Like, I don't know, let's call it Black Ops 6 could theoretically have mod tools in the game. Before this Microsoft and Activision merger, if you asked me like a year or two ago, if I ever thought there would be the possibility possibility of like a standalone zombies game, let's say before 2016 or 2017, I would have just laughed in your face and said absolutely not. But that is like kind of a viable possibility right now. I could see something very similar to the Halo MCC, but for Call of Duty Zombies, whether it's its complete own game or maybe some sort of like anthology or a remastering a, a lot of the like old maps, including stuff on Black Ops 3. It's hard to say, but because we now actually have resources for the game, 
game, or at least in theory we should, we could see some of these things be released. And this may sound kind of crazy, but another possibility is like Microsoft now, because of how much resource they do have for the game, they could almost just go and sort of reboot the series as a whole. Like I feel like in a sense, that's kind of what Cold War tried to do, like in a small way, but if they really wanted to, I feel like they could just reboot Call of Duty Zombies from the ground up. And that doesn't mean completely redesigning everything we loved about it, but you know, sort of bringing it back to the more simplified concepts, but still making the gameplay fun and satisfying and stuff like that. Obviously, it's easy to say that without putting it in practice. And I also want to be very clear as well, just because in theory now they have resources and they're under Microsoft stuff like that, that doesn't mean automatically that all of their problems with like development time and all these sorts of crunch things that devs experience will be resolved. And it's still going to have like its hiccups. That's something you can count on. But at the very least, it's no longer just Activision is the only game in town and Call of Duty is completely at the whim of what Activision says. There's basically a bigger brother here and it seems at the end of the day, that's who's going to get the, the last laugh. And I feel like this genuinely is a turnaround point for Call of Duty Zombies. And it's like we needed Vanguard to happen in order for this massive turnaround to begin. Vanguard is basically completely shot at this point. I, I really do think I wouldn't expect to see any major improvements for the rest of the year. And for all intents and purposes, they're probably just going to release what they had planned from the get go. And that's it. Probably the bare minimum of content just to get through it. But after that, in the next coming years, I would genuinely expect Call of Duty Zombies to be turning its direction, hopefully very positively. And I'm going to be here every step of the way as it goes along this year, obviously with Vanguard not really doing it for most people. I'm going to be experimenting with other stuff along the way. But when Zombies has something very exciting to play again, which I'm very confident it will, you know, I'm already going to be here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video today. I just wanted to update you guys on the entire Microsoft situation for those of you who didn't hear. And obviously I wanted to discuss what that means in more practical terms for zombies. And I hope you guys got something out of this video or if you, or you found it interesting. So if you guys did, make sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new before you go. And also go follow me on Twitch where I stream almost every day. Link to that's in the description below. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy. I'm going to go for now and peace out.